Hey Prodigy, it's Mr. Jeremy. Today we're going to be talking about the primary and secondary colors and we're going to be explaining why they are important to us as visual artists. Okay, so we are talking about colors today and we're going to start with just the basic color wheel. Sometimes it's called a color circle. Um, what we have are the, our three primary colors, which I'm sure a lot of people have been taught with the rainbow. Um, you've got these distinct colors that make up all of your other colors. We've got red, blue, yellow, and again, these are primary colors. These are the ones that primary colors cannot be created by mixing other colors. They only exist as they are. Um, color is nothing more than just a spectrum of light, which means it's, it's how light reflects off of another surface. So this particular object reflects blue off of the white paper, and that's how we can see the color. By mixing these primary colors, we get the secondary colors. By mixing red and blue, we get purple or violet, with yellow and blue we get green, and with red and yellow we get orange. Now again, these are the secondary colors, by, and with the primary colors, it is important to note, in order to get the, the perfect hue or tone of the secondary color, we have to put equal parts. So it would be half yellow, half blue to create a single true green color. And the same goes for red and blue for purple and yellow and red for orange. Now in between these, there are also what are called the tertiary colors, and that is basically adding unequal parts to any other of the secondary colors. So you would add a little bit more yellow to green to get yellow green. Um, you would add a little bit more yellow to orange to get yellow orange. And again, these are, these are tertiary colors. They can be any kind of mix from anywhere along the line, be closer to yellow closer to orange, but you'll get different pigments, different hues, different colors based on how much yellow or how much orange is in there. That comes into play a lot when we are working with watercolors or acrylic paints. Any kind of time we're mixing these, what we don't want to do is mix too much of one kind or another and understanding how we mix colors can depend greatly on whether or not we end up with just a brown glob on our canvas or on our paper, depending on what we're trying to create. Um, another important thing to note about the color wheel is the balance of color. There's such a thing as color opposites or complementary colors. And we find those using the color wheel very easily. It is just what's on the opposite side. So the complementary color for red is green. The complementary color for yellow is purple or violet. The complementary color for the primary blue is the secondary orange. Um, the reason why these are important is anytime you are mixing these two together, that's when you get that muddy mess of color in the middle. Uh, when we're using our watercolors or acrylics, or any other kind of paint, you get this real muddy mixture in the middle by mixing these colors together. But when they're side by side, these are the most vivid form or the most visible form. And they will appear most brightly when they are side by side together. Separated, but complementing each other with um, their, their hues and their mixtures together. So again, this is a different way of looking at color. A lot of people have probably seen the rainbow. You know, going around the wheel, you can basically just take out one color, add another all the way through. And you can see why
these are important for us there. And again, understanding and knowing how these colors mix and interact will help us translate and express our artwork more effectively as we move forward and as we learn more about composition and designing our pages and our pieces as we're starting to create more professional and standalone artwork.